I don't think uh, the audience here needs to be told about the importance of the agricultural sector to our economy. But our role in that is that we make a great contribution to the reputation of our farmers. They can demonstrate that they are responsible uh, in their farm practices. And not only does that improve notions of quality and safety about food, it's also addressing, I think, uh, consumer expectations out there. Um, but it also, in the end, helps maintain that right to farm, the community licence that we're all given to do what we do each day. Uh, the other aspect, too, is the, the risk of government regulation and um, the, the risk being that a, a regulatory model might cost more and Im impose great, greater controls that will hinder the business rather than help it. Um, so uh, the other really important thing is it's a great success story from this industry. The industry has taken ownership and got tangible results. The statistics here that I'm showing is from a, a survey that AgSafe did a couple of years back, and it, it really underlies what a great brand Drum Muster has become because of the service it provides. Uh, the awareness is very high, 94%. Most uh, commercial businesses would love that level of recognition. The support for the concept is very high at 93%. And of those who participated in the uh, survey, around 70% actually had used uh, the Drum Muster system. And those who used it spoke very highly of it. There were high levels of satisfaction. So I've waved the flag. There's great success, and it should be acknowledged. But the challenges haven't ended, and they will continue and uh, in, in the next 10 years. But what, what we face is the transporting of relatively low-value material across vast distances. We don't have the benefit of curbside recycling that uh, most urban centres enjoy. Uh, the end user has to travel distances to get their waste off their property. It's, it, it's, a, it's a very different uh, prospect than what we might be used to living in city centres. Given that area that we're operating in, and given that uh, we have a liability to collect all drums upon which a levy has been paid, we have a very large footprint, and most of it is in regional remote areas. Uh, so the marginal cost of, of, of running that business is a, is a real challenge. The other aspect is the better we get at this, the harder it's going to be. There'll be less drums out there to collect, so the, the cost pressures will get, get there. This uh, map here is just a, a snapshot of where all our locations are. Unfortunately, because of the size of the photograph, it does look like we're all in city areas. But if you look very closely, you can see we're not actually in Melbourne and Sydney. But they're the 750 sites that we've got across Australia. From the chemical perspective, um, it's the challenge is keeping the critical mass up there. We might have a farmer in a very remote area that has chemicals, but it could cost us a lot of money just to go there and collect that. So we need to be able to identify where the chemicals are so we can schedule economical runs um, for uh, collecting them. And then there's the issue of frequency. The more frequent we get there, the more reliable it is seen, we'll probably be able to get more people participating in, 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 the, in the service. As I mentioned before, market failure really hits here because where a, a waste holder is returning, for example, a free rider chemical, they have to pay the cost of that. Uh, because, and in some cases, the state governments do fund and assist with that cost. But what tends to happen is when faced with the cost of a free rider chemical that's not supported, they will withdraw from the service altogether. They won't take advantage necessarily of the free chemicals for them to return, which are covered by the drum muster levy. So what we see is an abandonment rate altogether. And if that continues to happen, then neither the, the, the uh, participant chemicals are going to get collected, nor the ones that are out there, the legacy chemicals. So we really have to work hand in hand here to make sure that we address the free rider issue so that it doesn't start becoming a millstone upon the neck of the industry participants who are taking responsibility for disposing of their leftover chemicals. The other aspect we need to take account of is the way uh, chemical use will change, whether it's driven by regulation or uh, things like resistance, that kind of thing. But uh, that's a constant uh, thing that um, ChemClear needs to address. 
some more spontaneity. I think one of the reasons we've done so well is being responding to regional needs, and they are very they vary across Australia. The community groups has been a very important model for us. I think there um, I think there's around 70 uh, or 80 uh, community groups operating for Drum Muster uh, across the country, and those community groups are basically a partnership with the local council and, and the councils and the community groups combined with Drum Musters uh, funding create a local solution to collect the drums. So you have local ownership. Um, in a way they create a small industry base in, in perhaps an area that the uh, transport challenges doesn't make it economic for uh, large processes to come through. What happens is that the small uh, groups, they're motivated to go seek out the drum. We pay a, a reward per drum for every drum they bring back in. So uh, the, the levy is being invested directly back into the community and we really like that model because the funding came originally from that community and if it goes back in there's obviously the environmental uh, benefits but there is also uh, from the funding that they raise benefits back into the community. The other aspect is uh, where collections initially used to be held on specific days and um, through uh, experience and knowledge of how uh, why farmers might not participate and trying to improve the service, the, the, the convenience to farmers, uh, the drum master team move, are moving to more continuous collections. So whenever the, whenever the tip is open, you can bring your drums back. And what's interesting is where our drum collections used to be quite spiky in these areas, uh, what's happening now is the spikes are gone, but we're actually yielding more over time. So from an efficiency point of view at our end, it's also been a win-win. So just to uh, think through uh, and reflect in conclusion why uh, Drum Must has been a success. It's voluntary, it hasn't been regulated. If you look around Australia, uh, the world, sorry, there are other programs but they tend to be a regulated model um, and we rate pretty well in our collection rates with them. Um, in uh, comparable voluntary programs, uh, the US for example, their collection uh, performance is not as good as ours. But um, I think the demonstrable risk to environment, there is a clear issue there that um, people can focus on and, and focus the, the agency to address the, the issue. Um, there's also the farm management practices and consumer expectations coming into that. There's a whole lot of QA systems that are driving farmers now to look at the way they operate their farms. And also, as we've seen in, in uh, different areas of agriculture, consumer expectations are dictating to the retailers uh, what kind of product they want. So we're seeing more and more of the consumer influence. We have a group of industry organisations who have picked up on this and they've been willing to drive leadership and play a role. And they really, in the initial stages, gave us impetus and the, and the momentum to uh, get the program running. I think that the, the program managers have adopted a flexible regional model. They haven't adopted a one-size-fits-all. So through their regional consultants, they've listened to the local problems and developed local solutions. And that's been a real key success factor in these programs over the last 10 years. I think for all the p people in the game in this, they share a risk if the program fails. Local government don't want to see it fail because they're going to have a landfill issue on their hands. Uh, farmers don't want to see it fail because where will they be able to dispose of their drums and unwanted chemicals and demonstrate, be able to demonstrate their farm ma management practices. And clearly for the AgVet chemical companies, it's their, ex their ability to have extended responsibility of their products will be uh, limited greatly. Um, and to start again uh, would be very costly. And I think the other uh, motivating factor is that there is a real uh, prospect that there are other regulatory alternatives for this. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a way, it's been a, a trigger for industry to say, do we want that kind of model or can we do it better for ourselves? And I think that Drum Muster and Chem Clear is an example for all people in the agricultural supply chain uh, to show as being a great example of how taking ownership and commitment can work and it is a success. Thank you.